the golden age of Ireland from 410 to 793. It is a period in Irish history where Ireland would seek knowledge and wisdom. Quite an interesting one, isn't it? I mean, most of her kingdoms would see themselves in their golden age with the expansion of land and the expansion of an army. They would have the largest army in the world and the most territory. That's how they define themselves. And yet, that's not how the Irish define themselves in their golden age. They define themselves with the amount of knowledge they have. And instead of expanding out, they expand their knowledge onto the world, which is very telling. Ireland becomes the land of saints and scholars, and it's kind of at this point in history, between 410 to 793, that the Irish will always look back, because this is the period that we want to get back up to again. A period where we're economically sound, where we're standard of living is high, our culture is ripe and plump. This is the period in history we in Ireland are trying to strive to get to once again, not trying to expand or take anyone else's land, not trying to commit genocide so we can take someone else's territory, not trying to have the biggest army in the world. That's not the point, that's not the end goal of the Irish government today or during the medieval period. The point is that we wanted to have a unified kingdom and then from that we were trying to bring knowledge and a certain standard of living into our realm, the realm of the Gael, the Kingdom of Ireland. That was the standard we were trying to get. And so with that, the question is, what is the Golden Age of Ireland? The Golden Age of Ireland is a period between 410 to 793 when Ireland was pretty much at its peak. Now, you could finish up the video there and move on, or we can see the evidence to see at what standard was this peak. How good was the Golden Age of Ireland? Because there's a lot of people out there completely oblivious and ignorant to Ireland having a Golden Age. What they see is 150 tribes. Ireland broken and very savage, tribal, ignorant, stupid. These are the kind of views you would pick up and see on places like YouTube that see a lot of English literature, literature made around the 1500s. The purpose of this literature was to show a ignorant, barbarous Ireland. So when the English came in, they could genocide masses of amount of us, round us all up, kill us, because we were ignorant, stupid, a bastard race of God. And that way, when they took our territory, they didn't feel bad about it. The English would go out of their way to kill Irish poets, the educated. They would justify it. In one case, there is a poet in Cork who is hung, he's executed because, as supposedly, according to the Englishman, he was making too much money, a poet. Let's be honest here. The reason why he did that is because he was killing the educated. You can see a lot of that going on between the 1500s and the 1600s. The English going out of their way to suppress and remove Irish culture. Now, Let's not be ignorant here. There's a lot of great English people out there and I have nothing against English people. I lived in England for about four years, but that's the fact. Between the 1500s and the 1600s, the English were trying to take over Ireland and they wanted to justify this by removing Irish culture, Irish education, so on and so forth. You make these people subhuman so that way, once again, I say it again, you don't feel bad about it. And so this history, the golden age of Ireland, is suppressed with it. It's ignored and it's put to the side. And the problem I have is that many YouTubers today are taking this information as granted. I could go through the entire internet and see 
how the Irish are constantly referred to as subhuman, stupid, tribal people. And the reason for this is because they're taking it from old English literature as fact rather than getting into the Irish perspective of the world. The Irish perspective is that the Irish see themselves as highly educated people. People that, when the Roman Empire was collapsing, had a lot going on for it. The Golden Age of Ireland seen its peak growth of the monastic settlements, the places of the main education in the 6th century. This flourished until the coming of the Vikings in the 8th century. During this period, the country witnessed glorious expansion of art, literature, manuscripts, and so much more, including metalwork and stone sculptures. Trade expanded to some insane levels, with Ireland trading as far as the Byzantine Empire in Constantinople today, which is Istanbul. Ireland was also trading with the expanding Frankish kingdom that would eventually become the Holy Roman Empire with Charlemagne. Many of the monastic members of the Irish church would go to the Frankish kingdom with Charlemagne to re-educate him in his Latin ways. During the Dark Age, Ireland stood as a beacon of light and would even help in the expansion of Christianity into Pictland, modern day Scotland and into the north of England, Northumbria. And also we would have the likes of Columbinus who would expand into Europe and build many monastic settlements. He would also take an insanely dangerous and treacherous route over the Alps. This was highly difficult to do and I cannot state how hard this was. This the Italian Alps had taken out entire armies trying to invade into the Roman Empire and Columbinus alone had managed to go around it. Many of his own followers, even the devoutest of them all, would refuse to go with him. Columbinus would eventually get himself over the Alps and there on the north of Italy would continue to build monastic settlements and even write letters to the Pope building up and explaining the situation in Ireland, highlighting that although there is a form of insular Christianity that is building in Ireland, Ireland still sees itself as a part of the Christian world and the papacy. Hiberno-insular art starts to really thrive in this period. You can see the majority of this in stone carvings, manuscripts, metalwork, especially in the likes of the Book of Kells and the Book of Durham. We can also see this in the Book of Armagh, which shows the life story of St. Patrick himself. What's very interesting about St. Patrick is that he's seen as the beacon from the Roman Empire. St. Patrick was seen as the man who came to Ireland to civilize them and therefore is a gateway between the peak of civilization in the Roman Empire to the Gael, the Irish themselves. St. Patrick in 410 is seen as the man who would bring about the start and the foundation of what it was to have the golden age of Ireland. It is seen over and over again with many folklore stories highlighting how important St. Patrick is to the golden age of Ireland, the man who would start the golden age of Ireland in the view of many of the Irish from the 680 upwards. It is also quite funny as well that many YouTubers would go on and tell you that the Irish are too ignorant and stupid to be able to create their own metalwork. This is quite funny because some of the greatest examples of metalwork can also be found in Ireland. The Irish have a long history of great artifacts going as far back as the Bronze Age. It can all be seen in the National Museum of Dublin today. However, during the Golden Age of Ireland, it is no exception with Christian insular art really taking its peak. We can see this in the Tara brooch. It is absolutely gorgeous and speaks for itself. Despite its name, it, is about, it was found about 20 miles away in County Mead. 
or chalice is another amazing example of the peak and the standard of metal work that was being created during the golden age of Ireland, a period where only two kingdoms truly dominated, and one of which was the stronger of the two, the Enel, where they recognised themselves as the Ardri, the kings of Ireland. Irish high crosses also start to really dominate Ireland as well. Sadly, majority of the Irish high crosses have slowly corroded away, so it's very difficult to make out what they would have been like during their peak. But you can see from what's left now that they were absolutely gorgeous and really highlight ha the standard the Irish were at. Irish high crosses were very important because they were the poor man's literature. Most people in Ireland wouldn't have definitely been able to purchase one of these books. So instead they would have turned to these high crosses to get the information they needed remembering that most medieval people couldn't read or write this was for the educated and so they would be able to understand the symbols and the people who were in the high cross a priest or a member of the clergy would have stood up and explained each one of the symbols and that information in return would have been would have been sent from father to son, so on and so forth. So when looking at the Irish High Cross, they would be able to tell the story of Ireland and also of what was happening within the Christian world and the Bible. Ireland in the Golden Age really prizes its land of saints and scholars, a land that really cherishes and really puts on a pedestal education through the Christian faith. And that is really telling. It's really beautiful in a way that many other cultures and kingdoms, I'm not saying Ireland is the greatest in the world. In fact, everyone's got their own unique way of really expressing themselves. It's just Ireland is interesting in the fact that the rest of the world is in the dark age and Ireland takes advantage of this by expanding its knowledge onto the rest of the Christian world. That's beautiful in a way. And I think I used pretty beautiful examples to show Ireland at its peak of its golden age and to explain to you, the listener, what is the golden age of Ireland. And yes, it is true that Ireland did expand into Scotland physically and also expanded into Wales, but the majority of the golden age itself sees members of the clergy and members of the Christian world in Ireland expand into boats we could still find evidence of this in Iceland with Vikings who write about finding Christian monastic settlements that were there before them, although empty and deserted. We can also find evidence in St. Brendan's Voyage, a literature book that talks about Brendan from Kerry going out into the North Atlantic and onto what many people believe was America, where the later Vikings would grow up. Um, described as Vinland and the Scandinavians or Vikings or whoever don't deny any of this information they highlight this as well that there is men Irish monastic people that have expanded out into the North Atlantic how far they went they themselves are not quite sure and it is absolutely amazing and it really blows me away and it's completely the reverse to the knowledge and information that you can see youtubers take from 1500 and 1600 literature from the English who are trying to justify genociding and killing the Irish. Now I'm not saying English people are like that today. I'm just saying in that period you had people trying to take over another people's culture, ways, etc. And to do so they're trying to make this culture and ways stupid and silly. It's not acceptable when you have modern YouTubers using literature from the 15 and 1600s and not questioning it and taking it as solid fact. That's not acceptable. And so I hope from now on that people start to learn more about the golden age of Ireland and stop referencing these silly little quotes from a very questionable era in Irish history. So anyway guys, thanks very much for listening and all the best. Also guys, just as I finish up, Rambling Kern has an amazing video out this week. Definitely go and check it out. Um, link will be down below. Furthermore, 
if you've been living under a rock, I don't know if you have or haven't, but uh, my home country is attached onto Europe, if you didn't know. And Eastern Europe right now has got itself inflamed in a bit of a war. I don't know if you've uh, been involved in news or anything, but if you want to help out or give any aid of any kind, um, one of which I cannot highlight enough is definitely this link below. So I'll be highlighting this site uh, to give aid and support to the people of Ukraine in a peaceful manner. Um, also, I'll be giving an old link to the old foreign uh, Ukrainian legion. I'm not telling anyone to go and join up. I'm just uh, placing it there uh, if you do have interest of joining. Uh, other than that, guys, all the best.